So we'd like to have a few minutes of silence. And once we Skype Bill and Diana, Farshid is going to lead us in the prayers. And we have a young man here who will lead us in the Australian RT. And then uh, Jeff is going to read four lines of a quote from Mayor Baba. Jamie's going to sing two songs. And if Erwin Luck shows up, he's the main man. And then Jamie will close the meeting out. So if we could have everybody silenced and seated, I'd appreciate it. Well, while, while we're waiting, I just want to say that um, there was a poem that Monty had written, and in it was three words. We're waiting, we're waiting, and we're waiting. And then after that, I read something that said, we are waiting for God to descend from the infinite to the finite and then take us from the finite up into the infinite. So we are waiting, we are waiting, and we are waiting. So now we're waiting for Bill and Diana if they show. Bill, Diana, we're trying to Skype you. Anyway, I can barely hear you. So we'll try two or three more times and then God willing, next month. Yeah, trust. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, Phil, Diana, Jay, hey, Baba. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. Okay, so uh, as you can tell, we're having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties. So if everybody will stand, Farshid will lead us in the prayers. The preserver and protector of all. You are all without beginning and without end. Non dual, beyond comparison, and none can measure you. You are without color, without expression, without form, and without attributes. You are unlimited and unfathomable, beyond imagination and conception, eternal and imperishable. You are indivisible, and none can see you but with eyes divine. You always were, you always are, and you always will be. You are everywhere, you are in everything, and you're also beyond everywhere and beyond everything. You are in the firmament and in the depths. You are manifest and unmanifest, on all planes and beyond all planes. You are in the three worlds and also beyond the three worlds. You are imperceptible and independent. You are the creator, the Lord of Lords, the knower of all minds and hearts, you are omnipotent and omnipresent. You are knowledge infinite, power infinite, and bliss infinite. You are the ocean of knowledge, all-knowing, infinitely knowing, the knower of the past, the present, and the future, and you are knowledge itself. You are all-merciful and eternally benevolent. You are the souls of souls, the one with infinite attributes. You are the trinity of truth, knowledge, and bliss. You are the source of truth, the ocean of love. You are the ancient one, the highest of high. You are Prabhu and Parameshwara. You are the beyond God and the beyond beyond God also. You are Parama, Allah, Malahi. Yes, son, God of Master, and God of the Beloved. You are named Jesus, the only one worthy of worship. We repent, O God, most merciful, for all our sins, for every thought that was false or unjust or unclean, for every word spoken that ought not to have been spoken, for every deed done that 
ought not to have been done. We repent for every deed and word and thought inspired by selfishness, and for every deed and word and thought inspired by hatred. We repent most especially for every lustful thought and every lustful action, for every lie or all hypocrisy, for every promise given but not fulfilled, and for all slander and backbiting. Most especially also, we repent for every action that has brought ruin to others, for every word and deed that has given others pain, and for every wish that pain should befall others. In your unbounded mercy, we ask you to forgive us, O God, for all these sins committed by us, and to forgive us for our constant failures to think and speak and act according to your will. Beloved God, help us all to love you more and more, and more and more, and still yet more, till we become worthy of union with you. And help us all to hold fast to Baba's Daman till the very end. Avatar Nirvati Jai. Avatar Nirvati Jai. Avatar Nirvati Jai. Deva. Puja Eternal Ancient One, your 
faces of bright transcendental sun. Light in the dark world and the tears I weep. My heart and hair I give to you to keep. Create, O oh, make creation, thus you are. Truth and truth's body, divine avatar. Who through compassion the three worlds maintains, destroy this ignorance that life sustains. These five lights are the whirling scopes of breath, of the world's real that bears me unto death. Unless you who are infinitely kind, bring the wheels of which is conditioned mine. Senses by love, he screws my heart, which to please you I have shaped from my heart. Accept them as you would a simple flower, that has no use beyond its shining hour. You are myself, I sing to you in praise, and beg your love to air me through the day. Till you, the ever-living perfect one, illumine my darkness with your shining sun. Oh, Erwin's here. Well, this is what we're going to do. <coughs> Jeff is going to read something um, from Baba, a short quote. Baba said, I am God in human form. Don't try to understand me. My depth is unfathomable. Just love me. Jamie? Sir. You're on. <laughs> Well, thank you all for having me, and thank you, Erwin, for letting me sing before you. For having me sing first, so so you'll be a relief finally. <laughs> But busy thoughts running through my head I feel tired but I can't sleep Oh, I feel hungry but I can't eat Just when I think I can't take it anymore I feel love That's me here, Baba Feel love that's me here, Baba. Feel love, that's me here, Baba. I feel love, that's me here, Baba. 
Baba. That's me here, Baba. That's me here, Baba. I got a feeling he's shaking me up. Whoa, I got a feeling he's waking me up. I got a feeling he's opening up that door. I feel love. Bill likes, but since Bill decided to stand us up, I figured I'd do whatever I want, right? <laughs> so I had uh, some requests for, well, what happened, I, I'd, I'd asked Farshid when he was going to Iran, <clears throat> and I said, oh, bring me a flower, kind of half-joking, I said, bring me a flower from the tomb of Hafiz. Well, he just gave me a tomb from the, uh, a flower from the tomb from Hafiz, can you imagine? No. Very sweet of him. So uh, I'm going to sing a, song, a Hafiz song, and this song actually, um, it, it, Hafiz mentions his tomb in this. I think he mentioned it a couple of times, at least once. And um, <coughs> uh, the melody also is kind of derivative of a, a Gugush song. It's inspired inspired by a Gugush song. Um, so she's she's version, not not the one you're thinking of. I'm going to do that one later. I'm going to do that. I had a request for that one too. So after after Irwin talks, in order to get everyone out quickly, I'll do this other one. But but this is this is one that uh, I. I Got to hurry up so Irvin uh, doesn't walk out. I would rise up if I only heard from you one kind or loving word. Like the sacred bird of paradise Up into your arms I would rise If you would only let me be your slave I would depart this world of time and space I swear by all that's good and true, I would rise up just to be with you. I would rise up. I would rise up. I swear by all that's good and true, I would rise up just to be with you. From this dry world, I would rise like dust. For in your loving hand, I trust. But if you don't send rain to bring my life anew, I will rise like dust just to be with you. Oh, when will you reveal yourself to me? Your matchless beauty to let me see. Let my life on this earth at last be through, that I might rise up just to be with you. I would rise up. I would rise up Let my life on this earth at last be through That I might rise up just to be with you I have grown old now with lines upon my face But if you would only take me 
into your embrace in the night my youth you would revive and in the morning as a young man I would rise if you would sit at my tomb with wine and song you would find out before very long your presence there would my death defy dancing up from my grave I would rise if at the hour of my death you would let me see just one glimpse of your beauty like coffees with this life I would be through I would rise up just to be with you I would rise up I would rise up like coffees with this life I would be through I would rise up just to be with you Four words came to mind Thank you, Baba, for Jamie. <laughs> anyway, if Erwin will come up, Brad will hook you up. They asked me to talk, so now I'll talk. Too loud? No, perfect. Everything okay? Yes. A little louder. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, very good. Um, the thing about you know, as he was playing his music, I was thinking of Baba as being the master magician of the soul. And he loved music. Baba really liked music. There was one fellow by the name of Madhusudan who he particularly liked. And he would sing these guzzles and Baba would really get into it. And he, Baba would uh, become a part of it, actually, as he's singing in front, and maybe there's 200 people in the room, and he's singing there, and Baba would be going like this and like that, you know, to, to boost them up even more and uh, let me hear more. And, and that's the way he, 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 Baba was very much enjoying his lovers. You know, all of you would make him very happy, actually. you think you would be happy, he'd be happier. <laughs> he does everything better, you know, so he's got to be happier. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, um, I did have the great opportunity to be there, and I witnessed a lot of things that uh, Baba was doing, and also uh, some of the personal things that he... See, my brother Edward and I would be sitting on the carpet next to Baba's uh, chair. He would be on the couch. There would be this couch. And behind him would be all these kids, uh, all these children. And Baba always had a lot of children around him. He liked the children. And then uh, he would uh, ask everyone if they want to sit in silence with him or would they like to hear him say something or discourse something? So I was sitting there and I was thinking, when Baba said that, I said, you know, I'm not very good at silence. <laughs> I would like to hear him say something. And Baba decided that he would speak because, and now speak means through his gestures and Eric is reading it. Uh, but um, Baba was so eloquent I mean, for people, we communicate by talking. But Baba was able to communicate so effortlessly uh, just with his hand signs and just a few signs of this or that. And he would be saying the most incredible things, you know, really amazing things. Now, I just recently was putting together a book that I had sent to him at that time. 
It was titled The Silent Master Mayor Baba, and it was the highlights of his life in pictures and in his own words, his own quotes. Uh, when he got that, because it took some time to do that, but it, when he did get it, uh, he was uh, very pleased and he told me this would be for posterity uh, when he wrote back about it, that it was art and he, and he liked it very much because it was all about him and, and the amazing things he did in his life. Baba did so many amazing things, like no one lives a life like that. You can uh, you can look at people's lives on, and even the most extraordinary lives that you can pick up in the, uh, books in the library, but to compare it to the way Baba was living his life, there was no comparison, at least in my mind, because I, I could never see the, the anything. No life was ever lived any better, and the things that he did. Well, uh, one of the things that his mission consisted of was to explain to everybody why we are born, what it is that we came into this world for. And it wasn't just, you know, for your career or family. It wasn't for you to, to, to worry about your health and all. There was such a thing that he explained over and over and over again. And it would always go over the heads of so many people because it's not things that you, re, you do in your everyday life that he was talking about. So you, you know, you hear it and it's, oh, it sounds nice, good. Now, on to the next. It was no on to the next with Baba. What he was saying was that the reason that you come into this world is so that you can actually experience the God state. God is not someone else up there or, or any place else. God is a state of consciousness in which you experience the infinite bliss, knowledge, the all-consuming, the all-knowing knowledge, the uh, unlimited powers that are in your soul. It's all latent. This is why you come here, so that you can get to that experience. And it's also why you needed to have the, have the, the help of the avatar, because to do it on your own, we would have done it if we could have. <laughs> I said, you know, if I could have done that, I would have done it already. I wouldn't need to go to Mayor Baba. But Baba was very clear that uh, to wipe out all of the obstacles in the mental world, that is uh, preventing you from having that consciousness, to having the same consciousness that he has. He wanted to bring you up to where you could experience what he experiences. It, it wasn't like he experiences something and we, you know, it's nice to hear what he experiences. No, it was that we have to have that experience. That is the purpose of the avatar, taking a birth in a human form so that we can relate to him in this world. There was no, that's his mission. That, that is why he comes here. He wants you, meaning all of us, each of us separately, to gain the experience that he has. Now, what is his experience? And he explains this over and over. He's explained it. He sees himself everywhere in everything. Not like us, we see ourselves separate from everyone and everything. He sees himself as the self of everyone and everything. So I was thinking, how can you see yourself as the self of, I mean, this is beyond me. This is like really talking over my head. Until he explained something which made it very clear. You have a dream at night. What's happening? You are the creator the preserver and the dissolver of your own imagination, of your own dreams. What do you see in your dream? You see people, you see uh, houses, you see landscape, you see stars in the sky. You see people with telescopes looking up at the star. You can see anything you want because it's all illusion, it's all a dream. And that's what Baba is experiencing, except that he is saying that we are really sleeping and dreaming. 
you think you're awake? <laughs> Don't talk to Mayor Baba about that. He's, <laughs> he's saying you're sleeping and dreaming thinking that you're awake because you have such a sharp consciousness which you have evolved through an evolution that this consciousness makes everything look real. So you can't say it's not real. Somebody come and punch you in the nose, see how real that is. You will, in fact, you will react because in our consciousness, feeling separate from everything and everyone, which is not Baba's experience, but it is ours. That is how we are. We, we, we look at this, this is all real. What, you think I'm sitting here talking and you're sitting there listening and then and this is uh, just gonna be an illusion and a dream? Well, if you talk to the perfect masters, which Baba had spoken about them, they all share the same infinite consciousness that he does, they will tell you that everything is illusion. It's all illusion, just like he does. It would be no different. But they each have their own way of bringing others around to, uh, so they can be helped to experience that uh, sooner or later, usually later. <laughs> I don't think it's sooner. <laughs> but anyhow, whenever it is. And uh, so what happened is I asked Baba if he would uh, show me the reality, the, the, his real self. And um, Baba went on to, uh, but you see, I was very impatient. I wanted it to be done now. I mean, why wait now? You know, so I'm thinking this very intensely to Baba. And he knows exactly how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking. And Baba says, because I was pressing him, he says in six months, <laughs> six months. So then, the, be to it and then. Now this was many years ago that this happened. And I'm, and it, but it'll be in six months, you know, whenever six months is up, that's when it's gonna be. Because his time is quite different. His time is always now. It's only the now that is real. If you want to think about the past you, in, in your memory, that's imagination. You have to imagine what the past, what, whatever it is that you were thinking that you wanted to know. Future, no different. You want to anticipate what's going to be in the future and try to create a mental model of what is going to be. That's also imagination. You have to imagine the future. But the now is no imagination. That has no beginning and no end and it's always now. So when this happens, it'll be now, just like I had wanted. <laughs> the six months when it's up, it'll be now. Whenever the six months is up, you see, because we're dealing with his time, not ours. We don't, he doesn't, <laughs> God doesn't go by our calendar. <laughs> He's got his own, ever present now. And it's the same for all of us. So uh, to understand Baba and how he experiences himself as being the self that you very that your own very self. We talk about the self of everyone. What are you talking about? You're talking about yourself too. <laughs> self of everyone. You're part of everyone. So that self is what he experiences, and that's why he can be at anybody's level because. He, experiencing yourself, is experiencing all of the states of mind that you have, your likes, your dislikes, your, your plans, your, your feelings, just everything. And also, he knows what you have to do in order to clear away, or what he has to do to clear away all those impressions that stand in the way of your seeing yourself as you really are, which is everywhere, just like he sees himself. Now, uh, when I was with him, I didn't think all these things exactly like this, but I was getting close enough at the time. <laughs> I really wanted to know him as he really is. And Baba would say that, don't mix me up with the body, I am not this body. I am everywhere pleasant, I am in, in you all. You've heard this many times, I'm sure, Baba said he's in us. 
So how is he in us? His consciousness is all pervading. It's, it, it has to be in everything because consciousness is what everyone experiences. You, you wouldn't know anything if you didn't have consciousness. Now, um, I just want to get to this part too. Baba was very friendly. He was the most friendly person you could meet. <laughs> you know, we talk about him in the heights of his experience, being God, being everywhere, in everything. But the fact of the matter is, he was really very human, and he was very loving. As a person, uh, you couldn't have a better friend. <laughs> you want to have a friend. Even if you didn't believe in his divinity, the friendship, anybody that would be with him would enjoy his company just like you would uh, any friend. But he had uh, far more depth <laughs> in that. But just the same, uh, he liked games, he liked to play, he would play cards. I was playing cards with Baba and, and the whole group. There was a uh, group. In the morning, there was maybe 15 people in the pre present with Baba. That was how it was in the mornings. And the letters would come from different people all over the world, and they would read the letters, and they would read it in different languages. And, they, and But the ones in English I could understand, and uh, he would answer those letters. Sometimes he would say not to send the reply immediately, to wait until he gave the okay. So, but he would dictate it just the same to whatever letter answer, answer to the letters. And then he, um, uh, so we were playing this game of cards and everybody in the room, it was about, like I say, around 15, would be sitting in a sort of a semicircle around Baba and uh, the twins were just boys at that time, young boys, maybe 15. They would hand out a card to everybody one card down and one card up. And then all of a sudden, see, I never played this game before, so I didn't know this, but all of a sudden everyone would cheer and they would, oh, oh, yeah, they would go up in the air. And half of the people, every other person would win, every other person would lose. So if you lost, you had to rub your nose on the carpet. That was the deal for losers. <laughs> But everyone had lots of chances to win and lose because the game went very fast. <laughs> and they would just hand out these cards like that. If Baba saw that his, he had a, his hand wasn't good, that they dealt him, he would say, what do you got? <laughs> what do you, right in front of everybody, you know, he would cheat in front of everybody. <laughs> there was no such thing behind the back. <laughs> and then he would take the card and we would exchange cards and, that would, and then Baba would win again, you see, and everybody else. But Baba then later said that those who rub their noses on this carpet in front of me are the real winners because what will be for them will be much. So everybody had a chance to lose <laughs> and become a winner. <laughs> that was the way it went. So, you know, Baba had a great sense of humor. Uh, he liked uh, to, to hear jokes. He liked to laugh. Uh, he would laugh quietly, you know. He couldn't just laugh and make sound because he was not being on silence. And he was silent, uh, really, for 44 years, right up till the time he left his body, uh, being silent that long. And he, was and he was constantly saying how he would break his silence and what would happen, and all the amazing things that would happen in the mirror. Uh, I mean, uh, in this book that I put out, The Silent Master, I collected a lot of the statements that Baba made over the years about what would happen and how we would know when he broke his silence. And uh, uh, it, it was uh, so many amazing things that he said about it. And then he also, you see, Baba had the habit of telling people that he would break his silence, even to the extent of saying when he would do it, you know, in a certain time, a certain place, whatever. And, and the, then the time would go by and nothing, he wouldn't do anything like that, you know, there was no, no, no difference that you could tell. 
So one of the things that he did say, and it's in my book too, uh, because he had given that, I only put in what he said, uh, was that if you thought that I would be telling you when and where and, and how I would break my silence, it only means you didn't understand the meaning of my silence. So there were times when he would explain that this was not just where he's going to give a lecture or a talk. Or, it wasn't going to be like that. This silence had a deeper, much deeper meaning that had to affect the heart and minds of all beings, of all persons. So it wasn't meant to be a talk or he's just going to give a lecture or something. No, it wasn't going to be like that. And I'm glad it wasn't because so many people lecture and so many talks and everything. Uh, even me, look at me, I'm yeah, talking and lecturing. <laughs> I'm doing the very thing that he, that he doesn't do. <laughs> but anyhow, I'm telling you what happened in my life, um, which is why I liked uh, Balji so much. Balji, as you well, so many of you may well know, could talk for hours. He would talk and give these talks every week, and he would go on for hours. And many times when he would begin his talk, he would say, I want you all to know that I don't know anything. But, uh, so now you can ask me whatever you want. <laughs> It didn't stop anyone from asking, you see. <laughs> the fact that this man just said he didn't know anything and now you're going to ask him. But the thing that he did know was his own personal experiences that he had with Baba. And that he could talk, you see. But, the, but if you wanted to know about God and all the other things like that, that was Baba's job. It was Baba that had to reveal that, you see. Not him. He... he he could tell you what Baba said, but what else could he say except that his own experiences with Baba? And, and one of his experiences, not that I'm, not that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> uh, one of his experiences was Baba had called him over. This is what he told everybody. Baba had called him over, and they were about to have dinner. So Baba said to him, Whatever happens, I want you to keep eating, no matter what anyone says, or even if I, even if me, if I, even if I tell you to stop, you don't, you continue eating. And I want to know if you'll do this for me. So Paul said, yes, you know, he would do that. He was an obedient disciple, so why wouldn't he do it? <laughs> he, he said, yes, okay. Now the dinner starts, and Bob is sitting there, and all the men and disciples are sitting on the, around the table also, and they, they start serving the dinner, and, uh, and everybody is eating, and, and then all of a sudden, Bob's stomach begins to growl, and his stomach is making sounds and noises and growling. <laughs> so. Uh, so they stop eating, you know, they, they're thinking, what are they going to do to help Baba? But, but Bao doesn't stop. He keeps going like anything, you know. He <laughs> he's, 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 continues to eat like, not, like nothing's happening. So the other Mongoli, they're looking at him and they said, you know, Bao, you really have to, should stop. We're going to have to try and help Baba. We don't know what's, uh, why his stomach is doing this. And Baba is holding his stomach and he, He's making faces like it's painful, you see. And, and then, uh, but Bao keeps eating. He don't stop for a second. He wants to keep eating like crazy. <laughs> Everything that's on that table. So then, Baba turns to him and says, Bao, how can you keep eating like this when I'm in so much pain? You, you know, you should try to see what you can do to help also, like the others. And he ignores everything Bob is saying. He goes at it more and more. Even, here, 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 there's some here. <laughs> and he continues like this. And Bob throws his hands up in the air 
And then finally, Baba's stomach starts to calm down and, and everybody is able to leave the table. So Baba's still there and then he calls Bao over and he says, Bao, you did it so perfectly. <laughs> you obeyed me so much. And he gave a big hug. He did exactly. He says, this has helped me in my inner work. Which you can't see is inner work, but that's it, it helped him, and because he did, even at even to be ostracized by the others, even Baba saying it, uh, you know, he went on like that. So, so that's one of the things that a mad disciple has to do. You see, you want to become a disciple, a mad one too. <laughs> There's no end to what goes on, because in Baba's world. What he sees that he has to work out the impressions and the thoughts and the feelings of, uh, that stand in the way of your uh, advancement. You know, you can't tell that. And he can't go on to tell you all of these things they would, uh, because there's things you wouldn't even understand what he has to work on. So he just does his work, his inner work, and, and we see the outer uh, side of it. So that, that's why. If anyone has any question, you can feel free to ask, because uh, there's no formalities here, so far as I know. <laughs> Are there any formalities? Can you tell us about the first time you went to do Guru Prasad and that father there? The first time? Yes. Well, um, Baba, the car drove up. I was in the car, and Mariji was driving, and we came into Pune and we, uh, uh, to Guru Prasad, where Baba was staying. He was staying in Guru Prasad. It was in Pune, and um, uh, Mariji is saying, Baba is outside on the veranda, and he's waving for you to come in. And you know, so I'm looking also, and yeah, Baba's standing there and he's waving for me to come in. So I uh, get out of the car and I scoot over to where Baba is, but Baba in the meantime has gone inside. He's now inside the room. So I go in there and uh, Baba was uh, very happy. There was about 15 people also with him in the room there and Baba was uh, seated in his chair, and I had brought this huge garland of flowers, which I thought was ridiculous. But Mary said to me, don't you want to bring some flowers to Baba? So I said, no, I don't need to do that. <laughs> I, I said, I'm, a, I'm his flower, you know, I'm already a flower. So he, he, he says, but you should do something, you should do that. And so I said, all right. So I went and I got the biggest garland they had and I put it on Baba and Baba immediately took it off and put it off to the side and he just grabbed me up and he kissed me on my cheeks and he had me sit near him and he said, um, uh, he said, how did you come? So I said, Baba, it was your will. And as soon as I said that, he motioned for me to stand up and to tell everybody in the group what I had just said, to repeat it. And I said, I'm here because it is Baba's will. And I knew how true that was because for many months, I was trying to, like anything, to get to see Baba. Nothing would work out. Finally, at one point, I got so desperate because there was a letter that came from Mani, a family letter in those days it was called that, that uh, said uh, that Baba would be entering seclusion for six months and that during that time he would not be receiving visitors or have uh, any uh, uh, or letters. But in emergency, you could send a telegram. So I thought, oh boy, this is coming up, and it's been six months since I wanted to see him, and I couldn't go because I had no money and I had no means of getting there. Oh boy, this was not going to be worth. This was no good. Uh, so in the desperation, you see what happens. You get desperate, and sometimes you get an idea because now you're looking for every which way that you can make it possible. And what I decided was what I should have done in the first place. I sent a letter to Baba. And in the letter, I 
explained that I wanted to come and see, and see him, and uh, but circum but I wasn't able to because then was working out. And Baba sends back a telegram, and he says, "Don't worry, circumstances will adjust themselves." <laughs> Mayor Baba, love Mayor Baba. So I thought, oh boy, I got this, you know, I wonder what's going to happen. And with this, uh, I'm going to cut this story so much short and just tell you, two weeks later, I'm there with Mayor Baba because circumstances worked out. Whereas before everything was no, now everything became yes. <laughs> It's, it's, you really like it when everything is yes, let me tell you. <laughs> it's better than no. <laughs> but that's what happened. And uh, uh, that's how I got to be there. So when I, when Baba said, how did you come? And I said, Baba, I was able to come because it was your will. You see, I knew how true that was. And I stood up and I told everybody that. And uh, then Baba confirmed it. He said it was his will. So I was able to get, and then there's something that I just thought of that reminds me, that Baba said that no one, uh, no one hears his name even, unless it is his will. Not even his name, you see. And everybody gets their turn at the wheel. It's the way of putting it. Everyone that longs to be with him and couldn't make it this time uh, will have that opportunity because the law of nature, the law is, it's a law, that you always get what you love. You see, you get what you love. It is the law of nature. You will always get what you love, whatever it is. It don't matter what it is. It can be something in illusion or it can be God himself. You will always get what you love. And, in the, and since you're all loving Baba and devoted to Baba, and you come here to hear all you can about him, you will have that opportunity. And, and don't think that it has to be in the single life. The life, your life goes on forever. You see, you're eternal. You don't die. Bodies die. That don't last long, actually. Bodies don't last long. But your, uh, your real self is imperishable. It doesn't die. There's eternal self. So as you become devoted to, to the love of knowing your true nature, because when you say you're going to know Baba, what are you going to know? You're going to know your own self as you really are unlimited, not the limited self, which we have experience of now because of our physical body is very limited, but the unlimited self, which is everywhere and everything. I mean, you, there isn't anything you wouldn't be able to do or know. He has that knowledge which, to which nothing can be added or subtracted. Go figure that one out. Wouldn't that every scientist love that one if they could? But uh, the thing is, these, this is the consciousness of the masters. And we're on that track. Everybody that wants to advance themselves is on that track. That's the track you're on. Uh, there is no other track eventually everyone comes to that point. Even the people that dislike Baba would crucify him, they would, they would kill him. They would, they would think that the worst things they can of him. And Baba said, even they, there comes a time when even they come to my feet. <laughs> you come to your feet because you've, run, you've had the gamut of the universe. You run around the universe how many times until you finally wear out? Say, it's enough already. <laughs> what is real? I want to get to what's, what's real, what's everlasting. And then when you think of, oh, well, what is everlasting? Oh, I heard that God is everlasting. How do you like that? You know, I think maybe that's what I want, the everlasting. And you come to that you know, you, we, we're all maybe very old souls, you know, been around a long time. But you see, 
the reason you, you can't uh, experience that is you have no memory. You get born with a fresh brain. <laughs> Nothing is written on it. <laughs> the minute you get born, everything, all memories are gone. You don't, the brain doesn't have any memories in it like that. So uh, it's not until after you pass out of the body that all of the life experiences then get co together with all the other ones that you have had, and you have learned a lot of lessons that way. But you still have more to go, so you have to come back again until you're finished learning everything that you need to know. Uh, I think Yupazni Maharaj said there was 8,400,000 lifetimes that uh, it takes uh, for that. Unless you come into contact with a perfect master or avatar, he can uh, wipe out the opposite impressions that bind you so that you can experience uh, the God state sooner. So, you know, we don't know because we can't remember anything. It all has to do with memory. You don't remember anything. <laughs> you come into this world in a little tiny form and you have a fresh brain, nothing's written on it. Now you can live your life without having all of the uh, problems and everything of the past to deal with because you don't remember it. And now you can live and work out a, a fresh experience. That's the way it's said. You know, whenever I heard the way Baba explained things, I said, you know, it really makes sense. <laughs> If anyone has a better explanation, I'd like to hear it. <laughs> All right, that was one question. <laughs> What's the next one? As far as like two seconds, what, what happened after you? What? You, you, you told how you got there. Yeah. Then what happened? Well, I was, Baba had previously said in a letter to me, previously, that I could come for one hour only. But when I got there, I never thought I'd ever be there for an hour. And, and he didn't do that. He, had, he kept me there for two weeks. <laughs> and he wanted me to be very close to wherever he was. That if, uh, so, we, so if he was riding in the car and having to go somewhere, I was sitting next to him. If uh, I was in, the, in, in Guru Prasad, uh, I always was close to where he was. He wanted me to really be very close to him. So uh, there was a lot of things that happened during those two weeks. I mean, no doubt. And uh, one time we went to this little girl's orphanage. Baba was invited to go to this orphanage. And it was for children. Uh, so he accepted that invitation. And he went there and he embraced each of the children and they would come up to him. And then uh, he embraced the teachers also as they came up to him. And uh, during that time, they had given out these uh, candies, what they called candy. And <laughs> I took one of them and it was the most awful thing I ever tasted. It was so nauseatingly sweet. I don't know how anybody could call it anything that anyone would like. It, 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 it was the worst thing I ever tasted. Now, Baba had previously, while we were sitting in uh, Guru Prasad, uh, uh, he had told me that um, uh, he asked me, if I believed he was the avatar, and I said yes, and then, he, and then he said three things. He said, if I ask you to eat any food that you wouldn't like, would you eat it? So I said yes. Then he said, and if I asked you to uh, walk uh, naked in the streets, would you go? So I said yes. Then he said, and what if uh, I wanted your head cut off for me? Are you ready for this? So <laughs> by this time, I wasn't even thinking anymore. I just said to myself, you know, I'm with the avatar, I'm going to say yes to everything. Don't care what it is. <laughs> so I said yes. And then, and then that was all. Then they, he called everyone else back in the room. And uh, uh, now I'm in this, 
place where Baba is embracing the kids and all the teachers and everybody and and they're giving out these candies, like I said, that tasted so awful to me. And I'm standing behind Baba and I'm thinking, you know, I could just picture it in my mind, he's gonna turn around and he's gonna say, eat it. <laughs> but then he didn't do that. So I thought to myself, why am I making up things that he's gonna do? <laughs> he didn't do that, I'm not eating this. So I didn't eat it. But that was not the end of it. <laughs> A year later, I went again to see Baba with my brother Edward. And this time, when we were actually leaving to go back to the uh, plane, to catch the plane, this woman comes over with a big platter of uh, candies. And, it, it, you know, I look at it and say, it looks the same as what I had the year before. But this time she says, this is Prasad. Baba wants everyone to have one. <laughs> so there was no getting around this. You see, now, now it was uh, definitely Baba's wish, and I wasn't going to disobey that. So, uh, so I said to my brother, I said, uh, how does it taste? <laughs> he said, good, it's all right. So I thought, ah, nobody could make that thing again. So I take it, and sure enough, it's exactly where I left off the year before. That's where I left off. This time, Baba said to take it. So, how was I going to take this? I was thinking, I'll, I'll eat it in little tiny pieces, I hardly taste it. But that was not the case. It couldn't be eaten like that and not taste it. Uh, it would just drag on the torture longer. <laughs> then I thought, well, maybe I'll just take it in one swallow, I'll just swallow the thing and all. But it was too big, you couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> then I thought, there is one way to eat this, and that's just to eat it, no tricks. And I actually did. I ate that terrible, awful, <laughs> nauseating piece of candy <laughs> that they called candy. <laughs> Uh, only because God said so. No one, if, <laughs> no one else could have made me do that. But you know, um, there was something too uh, that um, when these things happen like this, um, it's it's different. You know, it's just different. You know, Baba said because I committed to Baba. You see, that was it. You know, I'm going to follow whatever he said. And, and, and But the candies and the sweets that Baba would hand out were always very good. They were very tasty. You know, just like candy and sweets are supposed to be. Until we went to that orphanage. <laughs> but that was another, that's a story I remembered. Um, what else? House visits too? Huh? Did you make some house visits with him? House visits? Visited people's homes with Baba? Um, Madhusudan, oh, Baba had said to Madhusudan, because remember I was telling you he would sing before Baba. Uh, so Baba, after he had been singing, uh, said that he would like to visit his home. He would like to come. And Madhusudan said, oh no, Baba, don't, don't, don't come to my house. And then Baba said, but I want to come. I want to come and visit your home. He says, no, 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 Baba. That's a very bad idea. You're not, it would not be a good idea at all to come. So <laughs> Baba's saying, why don't you want me to come? So he says, because Baba, you're like an elephant. You have so many people coming. My little tiny apartment would never hold all these people. They, they would all, they would come, there would be no room. You, you, you can't come like that. That, that would, too many people that would come. So Baba didn't say anything. He says, all right, never mind. But you see, Baba always gets his way. <laughs> so what happened? Here's what happened. Baba tells one of his disciples, call Madhusudan's wife and ask her when there's going to be a new, uh, 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 special event coming up at his house. Ask her this. So 
the disciple comes back and says, well, you know, I called and he, and she says that his birthday is coming up. He's going to have a birthday party and it's going to be at the house. Then Baba says, now go and tell the wife that I'm going to come as a surprise. A surprise visit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Madison is not to know. It just be a nice surprise. I'll come in there, <laughs> and the wife should not tell him anything. So okay. Now it happens that I'm also present with Baba at the time when we go up to Madison's house, <laughs> and he goes. Baba uh, uh, goes up the staircase because Baba had all this uh, pain too in his hip from the accidents. Uh, I, I never called it really an accident. I said it was, he wanted to do this. This was part of his work. So anyhow, so he comes up at stairs and every, and all these cars, you see when Baba would go, Madison was right about one thing. All these people would go behind, in cars behind Baba's car. You see, there'd be a whole trail of cars going with all, all, the, all the people that want to be with Baba. So, so he, Baba's going up, and all these people get out of the cars, and they're all going up too. And Baba is sitting in his chair up there, and everybody is in there, including myself. And, <laughs> and Madison comes in and sees Baba sitting there in the chair. <laughs> And Baba says to him, now sing. <laughs> and he's singing these guzzles and it's a great party. Yeah, everybody's having a good time. And everyone fit in his apartment, his little tiny apartment. And we all fit. <laughs> you know, he wanted to do something. You, you, you can't outfox the fox. You see, that's the old saying. No way to outfox a fox. <laughs> <laughs> and Baba was always on top of it, you know, and in a very loving way, in a very nice way. You know, he'd find the ways that you liked. He'd want to lead you to the God state in ways that uh, you can do. It has to be how you can do it, how you would like it, you know. Even when things were very difficult, like Yupasni Maharaj had a real hard time in that uh, temple that he had his be in, it was filled with vermin and everything else. And Sai Baba just told him that the more you uh, suffer now, the greater your glory will be later. And, and like he could care about his glory later. <laughs> he was not at all con caring about glory when he's suffering <laughs> in there. But uh, he was able to do that because it was within his nature to be able to do it, you see. And whatever Sai Baba, as a perfect master, was uh, having him do it, 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 he, it was capable. And it'll be the same for everybody, you know. You get to be at a point that is within your ability. That's how it works. You can't do what's not in your ability. You have to do what is in your ability. And the perfect masters, they know how f they know all of that. You know, they, they see themselves as one with you, so they know it all about you, more than you know about yourself. Because they can see everything, the whole evolution, everything. See, the mind has a very important part to play in, in the experience that you have, because it is through the mind that you evolve consciousness. And you need consciousness to, to eventually know your true nature, your true unlimited nature. So the mind, uh, but then once you have full consciousness as a human being, you don't need the mind anymore. You don't need what made it. You, you now need to break out of it. You know, the container of the mind now is in the way once the consciousness is, is developed. And that's what Baba's work is. That's why he did this Mananash work. It's the annihilation of the mind. Who would ever think that the mind has to be annihilated? I used to think that everything was important because of the mind. Then I found out from Baba, now wait a minute, mm -hmm. the mind has a purpose. Once the purpose is completed, 
you don't need it. A chicken is, the chicken is in the egg. It needs the egg to evolve its body. Without the egg, it could never have a body. But once it's fully evolved, it don't need the egg anymore. It breaks, it wants to break out and get free and live its life. And that's what it is with us as well. But the container is the mind, you see, which I never thought about that as being a container. Some people just wish to be able to do everything that uh, the mind is capable of. But uh, Baba said, no, no, it's, it's not what it is. And Bob, it made sense. You know, it made a lot of sense to me. What? Five minutes. Oh, thank you. I was wondering, you know, how much longer do I have to keep talking here? <laughs> I'll wear everyone out. <laughs> yeah. Um, at what point, you were a young man when you first went to see him, but you'd heard about Bob before. At what point were you convinced he was the avatar of the Christ? Well, you see, when I first heard about him and he was making declarations of divinity to be God, I never thought that any man could ever be God, you see. <laughs> that, was, that was a new one on me. Uh, however, when I was reading, when I first heard about him, I read a book, this Listen, Listen Humanity, he was saying that everyone has to experience that. And when he said that, then the whole thing clicked, you see. Now, wait a minute. He's not saying that he's God, and, and what am I then? You know, what am I to that? No, he's saying this is the state that you have to experience. This is, this is your journey to become one with God. And when they would say one with God, even that didn't register with me. One with what? What's God? So, <laughs> so then... It was uh, clearer, because Baba clarified everything, that God was your own higher self. And when he, you draw your higher self down to be able to merge with it, that's what you're doing. That's what Baba is. You're drawing Baba down as, the high, as your higher self. And then you become one with that. You become what Baba is. You see, it's... There's only one self in existence, according to the way Baba explained it. That one self then imagines itself to be the self of everyone. Uh, See, that's what that goes on. So, uh, and it all just clicked with me. That was all just, yeah, they, you know, this is what it must be. You know, no one has ever explained it like that. You know, so that's why I like Mayor Baba. This is the way he looked when I met him just like in this picture. <laughs> I was looking at the picture. <laughs> Mayor Baba, J. Mayor, Mayor Baba. Baba. <laughs> and Jamie will end it with a song. So because there are uh, Several Persian people here who asked for a song. It's a song I wrote, but the melody comes from Gugush, because uh, Gugush is a famous Persian singer. You should listen to her sometime. Uh, the song is Garibe Ashina, but I call it Beloved Meher. Failing all. Beloved may hair seems somehow I yet succeed to remember to call out to you and in my hour of need in this world which seems to measure all of life by praise and blame there is only one success my heart will ever wish to claim And that's to cling to you Even with my last breath And to never let you go Even beyond the hour of death 
Well, I can whisper smoke My moral soul curl And when you depart this flesh To enter into the other world Oh, my beloved man Don't ever let me go Oh, my beloved man Tell me you love me so Oh, my beloved man Why you love me, I don't know Oh, my beloved man Your love is all I see Oh, my beloved man You make my senses weak Oh, my beloved man How I long to hear you speak Now it pains Love and may hair, my aching heart is all a flood. To know that all your lovers drink wine while I taste only blood. I pray only for the courage to accept this cup you've offered me. And to know how great the treasure Simply because it came from thee Yes, and to cling to you Even with my last breath And to never let you go Even beyond the hour of death Well, I can whisper smoke My immortal soul will curl And with you depart this flesh To enter into the other world Oh, my beloved man Don't ever let me go Oh, my beloved man, tell me you love me so. Oh, my beloved man, why you love me, I don't know. Oh, my beloved man, your love is all I see. Oh, my beloved man, you make my senses weak. Oh, my beloved man, how I long to hear you And as usual, we'll end it with two words, Jay Baba. Jay Baba.